my images or my memories. No, 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 these are not memories. This is all real what you see. Every image, every detail, everything is real. Everything is real and it's not a memory. Not has, it has nothing to do with my memories anymore. Memories are gone, but the images are As someone who doesn't have a single home video of myself or my sister as a kid, I've been thinking a lot about how my memories of childhood relate to reality. I wonder how my perspective would change if I could re-watch a recording of my memories. I wonder what I could learn from watching a video of my parents at my current age. I yearn for a clear connection to my past, but at the same time, there's something romantic about having to rely solely on memories and family stories. I think about my grandparents who only have a couple pictures of their parents, no voicemails, no silly video clips of their parents goofing around, and no iCloud folders organizing their videos by year, month, and day. With the rise of smartphones, content creators, and a culture where everybody feels like the main character of their own lives, civilization is at a fascinating turning point. In 2023, it feels as though everything is recorded in one way or another. The new documentary Fragments of Paradise, which I had the pleasure of watching at the Seattle International Film Festival this year, tells the life story of independent filmmaker Jonas Mekas, who for over 70 years documented nearly his entire life. Mekas was the first daily vlogger. His goal was to capture the little fragments of paradise scattered throughout his life. I'm not documenting reality. That doesn't interest me, but I, I'm celebrating reality. I'm picking out certain bits and I film them in a way that they are like celebrations of life. Mekas' films were experimental and unlike anything that had come before them during the 1960s. Although his movies were not particularly popular in the grand scheme of things, they were influential in developing the underground film scene at a time when censorship of sacrilegious movies was strong. Mekas quickly became the figurehead of independent cinema in America and believed it was his life's mission to show independent cinema to the world. Born in war-torn Lithuania, Mekas fled to New York with his brother when he was 27 years old. I don't have enough knowledge to comment on the tragedies that Lithuanians have faced throughout history and how these hardships influenced Mekas' work as a filmmaker, but it's clear that for Jonas, filmmaking was a way to process the pain endured throughout his life. Despite seeing how much heartache and mental anguish Mekas' creative pursuits caused him at times, there's something inspiring about watching a man with pure intentions being fully obsessed with his singular mission. As with many great artists, it seems as though his greatest gift was also one of his heaviest burdens. There's something poetic and grounding about seeing raw, unedited video footage of the real world from a time when video footage was largely unavailable. There's a scene in the movie where Mekas was documenting himself walking around in the rainy streets of New York just for the sake of documenting it. No special occasion, no goal. He just wanted to capture that particular moment in time. As a viewer, getting to experience a regular citizen walking around the streets of New York in 1970, 28 years before I was even born in this corporeal realm, feels almost psychedelic. Video, as a medium, is unique in the sense that it allowed artists to capture reality with a level of detail that was simply unavailable before the 1900s. Painting and literature could attempt to display reality, but video has the unique ability to capture a real moment and save it for later. When you combine that level of reality with the perspective of an average Joe Schmo walking around the street, you get a sense of what it must have felt like to be there at that time. I remember the New York-based comedian Chris DiStefano explaining in an interview that if he could go back in time and talk to anyone throughout history, he would seek out average citizens rather than influential figures and world leaders. 
His justification was that there is something deeply fascinating about the insights provided by regular, average citizens. Similarly, I find films about average, everyday laymen to be more interesting and moving than any other type of media. It allows us, the oh-so-average viewers, to relate to and understand what another person's life experience might have been like. To me, the most interesting aspect of this documentary is the way it highlights the involvement of Jonas's family in his films. How does having one's early life and adolescent years captured on video impact one's psychology as an adult? Would the ability to re-watch any and all of your biggest or smallest life moments benefit or harm you? Would access to these videos give us more compassion for ourselves? Would we be able to better understand who we were as a baby and the influences that shaped us into the person we are today? Would the ability to watch your life's formative moments rather than having to remember them be a blessing or a curse? For Jonas's daughter, Una Mekas, this is a real possibility. She can literally re-watch her entire life because her father captured it on camera. But there's a caveat. Her life was documented from her father's perspective. The videos of baby Una are not an objective, unbiased representation of her real life. They are at best an attempt to poetically capture, quote, some of the beauty, some of the happiness through her father's eyes. As expressed by Una herself in Fragments of Paradise, she feels incredibly lucky to be able to re-watch her father's films and witness her upbringing from someone else's point of view, a luxury that not many people get to experience. Maybe Una's positive outlook towards these films is due to the extreme care and attention that her father put into creating them. His pure love for his daughter is apparent in nearly every shot. The combination of voiceover, editing, and sound design makes his films a sort of visual poem that his daughter can cherish forever. Kids raised in 2023 are in a similar position to Una, having their entire lives filmed by their parents constantly pointing cameras at them. Unfortunately, many of these kids will not be as fortunate. Bad parents will film things they shouldn't, use their children for views, and take advantage of kids via video in one way or another. Even if the parents' intentions are pure, there seems to be something wrong about having this much access to our past. And if not wrong, it at least feels weird. So I asked my friend Jordan, a practicing psychologist, what her thoughts were on this ease of access to documenting our life. She said, I believe the modern capability we have to document is inherently a gift. I believe the act of documenting itself can be a demon. I think with the ability to document, people become less of a mystery and we can love them in even greater entirety. However, I think documenting can become too consuming. So much focus on capturing every moment risks the loss of spontaneity, of sincerity, of being present-minded toward the phenomenon that is actually unfolding in front of you. It makes me sad watching concerts swarmed with phone cameras, friends at the table scrolling their respective Instagrams, couples reenacting their proposal to ensure it can be shared in the most picturesque way with other people. I loved her insight into the idea that the ability to document is a gift, but the act of documenting itself can often be a curse. And as someone who has and continues to document a lot of their life in many ways, I would fully agree with that. So the question that I can't seem to get out of my mind that I've been thinking about for years now is, what happens to these kids? What will be the result of these kids who have their traumatic childhood filmed by their parents 365 days a year? Or what about kids who never got to meet their parents, but can rewatch thousands of hours of their parents in their 20s doing a podcast? What sort of psychological healing could happen as a result of this ability to watch videos of your parents throughout their entire life? I'm very intrigued to see where this goes in the future. Isn't a lot of trauma caused from this lack of connection to our past in some way? So if there's this growing ability and common trend to document so much of your past or your current life that will become your past, what will that do for people psychologically? I guess we'll have to wait 10 to 15 years to find out. I like what I see. Why else would I show it, share it with you, this image? This reality of images. As a passionate fan of art about art and witnessing artists struggle through their creative process, 
I loved everything about this documentary. Fragments of Paradise made me cry like a baby and I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun writing it and recording it and editing it. And I'm actually writing a lot these days. Uh, I write for my day job, which involves TV and movies. Uh, I've spoke about that in the past a little bit, but I just launched a Substack for myself, for this channel where I can publish all of my written work. I'll be putting a lot of stuff up there, whether it be reviews, essays, random dialogues and thoughts or diary entries or journal prompts. Like I'm just prioritizing writing a lot more than I used to. I think it makes my videos better. It's fun for me. And I just like developing that skill set of learning how to write nonfiction and video essays and just more thoughtful ideas when it comes to film. It's essentially a platform for independent writers and journalists and artists to publish written work or art uh, in newsletter format. So if you subscribe, you'll get emails with my new articles or my new blogs, um, or you can just view them on the Substack site. I subscribe to a bunch of different YouTubers and independent journalists. That's about it. Thank you for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.